This is Amaria Sweet with Heart Mind Expressions. And today I'm with Dr. Maggie Hopkins, MD, MBA, a clinical pathologist and functional medicine and health coach. How are you doing today, Maggie? Let's go ahead and begin uh, by what you're, you've been doing and what your vision is and where you're headed with what you're doing. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today. Um, so in the past, I've had a laboratory consulting firm, and recently I've been called to help people more directly. My passion has always been functional medicine and healing the body versus just treating disease. So right now I'm starting a functional medicine practice and a health coaching service so that I can serve those outside of the areas that uh, are covered by my medical licenses. That's really awesome. And then you're, for the audience's um, sake, now where are you located out of so they can kind of get a better idea of the area you're from? And... Well, I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm licensed in the states of California, Georgia, and Utah. And right now, because of family reasons, I'm actually in Quebec, Canada as my physical location. So my practice is going to be entirely online, telemedicine and telecoaching. Perfect. Perfect. So with your online practice that you're creating, what kind of things do you do for people? How is it that you um, take your gifts and talents to help raise other people's energy vibrations or help them to get on their higher path? So when someone is ready to take responsibility for their health and they need someone to give them some guidance on what steps to take as well as someone to keep them accountable, that would be where I step in. Or potentially trying to find the root causes of why there may be some mystery illness would be the functional medicine approach. But both functional medicine and health coaching is to to really dig down into what are the root causes of why you're not healthy, find out what those are and treat the root causes versus treating the symptoms, which is what a lot of conventional medicine is these days. Right. It's true. A lot of conventional medicine only focuses on symptoms and guesswork, which is really sad when you think about it, rather than going into kind of like weeding your garden and finding, wait, where's those pests? Where's the weeds that I need to pull so that you can have that beautiful lush garden? Exactly. And that's what your health becomes when you treat it that way, like a garden is beautiful, lush, and that you can reach the pinnacles of health. Awesome. So as far as on besides the nutrition do you use like different aspects of NLP or neurolinguistics pro I do the emotional emotional hygiene I call it is so important because if you're not also examining the emotional reasons of why you're not healthy what what is causing you to make the decisions that you make what's going to keep you from following that plan any plan is only as good as whether or not you actually do it so you you've got to be looking at your gratitude every day you've got to be yes looking, what are your what are the things that have happened to you in the past that you're still carrying that cause you to keep making these subconscious decisions that are keeping you sick so if we don't uh, if we don't explore those they're going to keep happening awesome and that's so very true too um, just as an NLP practitioner myself I've seen that so many times just the difference it makes when you have the attitude of gratitude and step out of that victim mentality and just look from another perspective at what the crap we've been doing in our lives. It's just mind boggling. Exactly. The good news is when you take responsibility for it, even if it's not your fault, but when it's under your control, your responsibility, you can fix it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with that mind, body, spirit connection, what would a 
like basically say I came to you and we'd we'd been working on the the mental emotional side and I've been able to find some triggers or where I'm sabotaging myself what would be the next step as far as how would I know like say I needed to lose weight with that or gain weight even like how would you take your nutritional approach to help that person that maybe would be having those questions coming out of that self-sabotage and lack of self-love sure so um like you said if we we've, we've addressed uh, the self-sabotage lack of self-love you've got that under control and now you're ready because you love yourself to make those changes we're going to figure out what are those changes going to be and i'm more of a let's let's add things let's give you things let's figure out what's important to you and make sure you still have those things i'm not about deprivation my plan needs to be it needs to be fun it needs to be delicious it needs to be yes. butter. <laughs> <laughs> so i well, love that <laughs> there will be a, a few situations where you might want to restrict the butter but very few in my book <laughs> oh god that's funny i love it I love it. So do you do more of a vegan approach or more of a whole foods, um, all types of food type approach? Definitely whole foods. And I, I could in certain situations recommend almost any kind of diet. Uh, as long as you are including the things that are so important, you can fill in the rest of your diet with whatever you want. And you could, the, the most difficult diet to be healthy on is the vegan diet, in my opinion. Right. But it it absolutely can be done. If that is more important to a person, I would say that's more of a, a like a, a spiritual calling to really give up the animal products. It, it, it's for ethical reasons versus uh, health. For health, a vegan cleanse, it's fantastic to give up animal products for a short period of time for cleansing. Um, and there are those who are able to keep it up long term for the rest of their lives and be perfectly healthy, but it does take, a, um, uh, it's a lot of work to be able to do that. So uh, it really I, is a I, big commitment. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I do plant based primarily the plants are the most important component, but I right. do believe in there are certain things that you just can't get from plants or it's difficult to get, to get from plants. And, and, um, of course, if, uh, someone doing vegan could sup just simply supplement with those things and, and keep the rest of the diet vegan. But I do, if you're eating enough vegetables per day, that's the core of what my diet's going to be. You can fill in the rest. And then in some cases, a keto diet might be appropriate. In some cases, just a whole foods diet, anything goes. And I rely on intermittent fasting quite a bit. Yes. Require people to change the things, the foods that they love. And I also provide a list of, Here's a healthy way to do the things that, that you love. Just you're going to, to choose that. the um, the healthier ingredients. You're going to choose for animal products. These are the, the happy, healthy animals. They're they're the products from animals like that are healthier for you. And I love that. Being able to buy if you like dips and sauces, if you make them yourself, are just so much healthier than what you can buy. Yes. At the yes. A nice health food store you can get good versions so you can eat almost anything on on my diets and there's a way to do it where it's building your health it's not about deprivation i love that i love that and like do you take more than just the intermittent fasting uh do you also do like a heavy metal detox or different organ cleanses uh yes in in some cases but the first thing you're going to do is to restore the overall health of the body with nutrition because you can't you can't handle detoxing right. until your body is healthier if you try it will make you sicker yeah so there are specific cleanses that i do and all of my plans include the type of support for detoxification that needs to be happening on a daily basis because we're being exposed to toxins in our food, air, water, every day. And our body's designed to take care of those. And some people have more difficulty than others doing that, which can lead to accumulations and disease. So we need to be supporting that daily detox. And actually intermittent fasting is one of the best ways to do that. But I also recommend very specific herbs and different regimens that support each organ to, to do its job, especially the liver. 
to do its job, and then, of course, fiber to bind the toxins and get them all the way out of the body. Right. And a lot of people don't realize how toxic their bodies are and how it's so important to have healthy gut health and just all the way through, like how they can have pockets in their intestines somewhere with something nasty when you just get the right cleanse that how much cleaner and healthier you feel and even lighter when you get rid of all that garbage. Absolutely. Really cool. Gut health is one of the, the, the cornerstones of health. All, all disease or health begins in the gut, it's my opinion. Right. But I take it one step higher, and gut health is really dependent on liver health. The liver is the number one organ that I uh, focus on and support, and I'm able to have tremendous gains in gut health by promoting the health of the liver. Interesting. That's actually a different approach than, than I've heard before. Do you want to explain um, basically the research that you found on that and how detoxing the liver actually improves with your gut health? Sure. So the, the theories that I found actually came from Chinese medicine, Eastern medicine, and, um, and then going back to basic physiology, the function of the liver, what does it do? It's creating bile and releasing it into the small intestine. And one of the functions of bile is to clean and clear the small intestine and only allow the good bugs that are supposed to be living in there to be there. And when the, the liver is overloaded with toxins, it doesn't fulfill its, uh, its it has a synthetic role, making things, synthesizing things. And it, it, it can't, when it's overloaded, it can't make bile like it's supposed to. And you have a deficiency of bile in the small intestine causing overgrowth of bugs that are not supposed to be there. Also malabsorption of uh, fats and fat soluble vitamins. And so all sorts of things can start to happen when the liver is just not functioning uh, at tip top shape. And keeping the intestine clear is also, it's incredibly important to have periods of fasting and the migrating motor complex goes through and just sweeps out everything that's left over between meals. And if you're not having periods of fasting between meals or once a day, then um, all, all kinds of things can sort of build up and grow in there and cause chronic inflammation. And it's just a vicious cycle from there. Wow. I, that's a really interesting explanation. Thank you. I've done some research on leaky gut where I've actually been able to heal that myself using um, what Dr. Bergman teaches. And it's been really fascinating learning how not only is our immune system stemming from our gut health, but also serotonin production whenever we're, to be able to sleep and, pr and produce DMT and just all those happy little hormones that we need to be able to function. That's really cool. <clears throat> yeah, the majority of serotonin is in the gut. And uh, if your gut's not happy, neither are you. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, actually that explains a lot with people that suffer with depression and anxiety because just healing my gut itself has really helped in being able to not just control but pretty much eliminate PTSD, which wow, has been huge in my life. Yeah, huge, huge. So what kind of a liver detox would you usually do with somebody to, to help them? Is it like nutritional or do you use like supplemental things or you said mostly herbs? Do you ever use oils or anything like that? Do you mean essential oils? Mm-hmm. I would bring in essential oils as part of it. There's um, benefits with something like a lemon oil, which stimulates your phase one detoxification. And then you're going to also provide things for the liver to complex to the things that's breaking down in your phase two detoxification. Um, so there's, um, you need to support both types of detox at the same time, as well as fiber or binders. So there's three steps to detoxification mm -hmm. of toxin. You're, you've got phase one is your liver is using oxygen to break it down. And then the phase two is it's taking something else 
that's water soluble complexes onto it. So you've got your oxid uh, breaking down, then com complexing, and then removal. It's not going to make it all the way out of your body unless you are actually getting it out with the, the fiber that's going to bind it and take it out. So uh, each of my plans is, is going to have specific things that address all of those at once. And when you are supporting all three of those processes every day, then you're able to slowly detox and to consistently remove the toxins as they're coming into the body. Um, and um, a lot of people also have a problem with, um, like, say, gallstones. I mean, oh, know. right, right. And there are um, things we can do to slowly dissolve those over time. And then in, in some cases, there are some cleanses to kind of speed up getting those out of the body. That's awesome, especially where there's so much stress these days and people holding on to or trying to get rid of negative emotions. And then maybe you've got a gallbladder attack or something. It's always amazing to me that there's other options out there. And I love that because my, myself being a cancer survivor, I chose the natural route as well. And I'm so grateful because I look at those that get that gallbladder removed when why not? at least try to heal it if anything because we were truly made our bodies to heal and regenerate themselves so why not use the tools that we have which i really love that you're really focusing on the liver like that to to help people because as we go through our dark night of the soul you know or whatever clearing those energies we do need to go through and heal those organs and what better way to do it than not just nutrition but doing the whole mind body spirit connection in my study of spirituality, as, as well as health and medicine, I, I learned a concept that is um, that when negative emotions are stored in the body, they're stored a, along with toxins. And so uh, holding on to toxins in the body can cause you to hold on to negative emotions and vice versa. And when wow. you by the emotions, you're releasing the toxin at the same time. So you need to uh, be drinking a lot of water and working with your body to get those toxins all the way out and when you detoxify the toxins at the same time all these negative emotions can become loose in the body and you need to be doing things to help get those out as well such as journaling or gratitude that's awesome i love your philosophy on doing that whole body mind body spirit approach just just absolutely beautiful i've just I come uh, I've come to this by finding out what works and you can do a, a million and one things and realize at the end of the day, not, it's not working or you're back in the same place that you were mm -hmm. and you've, you've got to address the whole body. You've got to address emotions if you really want to have meaningful change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those definitely, it's, it's crazy how any slew of emotions that we have can affect different parts of our body really yeah. really is amazing on how that manifests so when you're taking somebody through these detoxes and things is there any kind of like blood work or any type of things that you do um beside or do you do more of an intuitive approach with kind of a system that you follow so in in some cases lab work may be appropriate that is my background is a laboratory doctor that's what clinical pathologist is and uh, lab work ha has the drawback of being expensive, but it, if you are results oriented that you wanna see where are you and let's track it and let's uh, see on a piece of paper that you've made some change, then that's the way to go. But it's not always needed in a lot of cases, just through a good history, we can figure out where we need to approach. And the beauty of it is, is that in most cases, we're doing a lot of the same things, and that's removing exposure to the toxins. We're uh, helping the body to clear them out, and we're replenishing all of the nutrition that's there. So there's a lot of things that can be done where lab work is, is not needed. And sometimes you might hit a brick wall and nothing's working, and then we're going to bring in some labs to really find out what's going on there. Um, but let's take uh, my approach to, to thyroid uh, for instance, so okay. a lot of doctors will rely only on the TSH, which is the, the hormone that your 
that your body makes to tell the thyroid to make thyroid hormone. And if it's uh, low, then they say your thyroid is too high. And if it's high, they say your thyroid is too low. But it's a very simplistic approach. And the medicine that is prescribed to treat hypothyroidism, the T4 molecule, suppresses TSH. So in fact, you can be treating the lab value and not the patient. And many find that their thyroid symptoms are not totally controlled taking T4 only. T4 is the storage hormone of the thyroid. There's also the active hormone called T3. So when a person is taking a little bit of both, they, they may find out that they have a resolution of those thyroid symptoms that they didn't before, that being fatigue, dry skin, constant. Right. Yeah, so, um, and in this case, the, the lab value is not gonna be that, at least TSH isn't, isn't accurate. And you can do a full thyroid panel, but you can also, if a person is already has a diagnosis of, uh, of hypothyroidism and is taking medication, um, I find that the most effective thing is to let's do a symptom diary and then let's slowly change the amounts of each of this T3, T4 that we're doing and let's track your symptoms and find out what you feel best on. And then we'll follow up uh, with the TSH to make sure that we're not wildly off. But uh, because it can be, can cause so many problems with um, just treating the lab value and the person doesn't really just doesn't feel well, you want to get them feeling better. You have to rely on the symptoms and um, treat the patient, not the lab value. And then, right. And then if, uh, if it's still, you're not able to, then of course the labs are going to help get you on track if you're not sure where you are. Awesome. Well, and it's amazing that you've got that, you know, of course, the scientific background to be able to check that um, and being able to upregulate the thyroid again if it's down by the meditation that we do and just getting out of that sympathetic dominant or fight or flight state. It's really interesting how that can also help heal the thyroid. For, for me, that's one of the methods that I used as I tapered off of the thyroid medicine that I was on. And um, do you ever notice that with your patients that you're working as you're working like on their meditations, their nutrition, they start to downregulate the adrenals and balance out? Do you ever notice that, is it a very quick transition for the thyroid to start upregulating again? Or is it just very depending on what patient you have to be? Depending on, on the person, if it's a very mild def deficiency, it could be um, to the point of not needing any medication because of the body just restoring itself. It can definitely happen. That's really cool. What other maybe health issues have you worked with besides like the like liver issues or um, thyroid issues? Well, diabetes and... Um, and helping people get pregnant. Oh, wow. So let's talk about that. How would you help somebody that might have some fertility issues? Well, first, if they've had an evaluation by a fertility specialist and found that they're anatomically normal and um, all of the usual things ruled out, and they're not sure why they're, they're not having great fertility, there's a lot of different things that we can look at and, um, and mitigate and treat and a lot of the things that I include is making sure that the thyroid is treated or getting adequate iodine and all of the micronutrients that the thyroid needs. You cannot make and sustain a pregnancy without your thyroid working. Right. Uh, and, the, and gluten, a lot of times the gluten sensitivity can cause infertility. Um, oh, that's interesting. It may be related to the thyroid, yes. And oh. there are some um, pro progesterone deficiency when a person is under stress, they can only make either sex hormones or cortisol. And you need cortisol to be able to run from the tiger. So right. we'll take the precursor of progesterone, pregnenolone is what it's called, and it will make cortisol and it will steal from uh, your sex hormones. And, and so you'll end up with, uh, in the case in women, estrogen dominance because you deplete progesterone, leaving the unopposed estrogen um, progesterone is needed uh, not only for feeling calm and having a svelte figure, uh, is needed for sustaining a pregnancy. So um, restoring progesterone, 
uh, through supplementation is an option as well as things to lower stress and supplements to help the body be able to make its own. And then there are some supplements that we're not sure exactly how they work, but they just seem to do the trick like magic, like um, uh, royal jelly is one of those. Wow. Wow, I wish I would have met you about 10 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) I, I actually had a hysterectomy because I was having so many problems at first getting pregnant Um, And then I had several miscarriages and just thyroid issues, stress, which I was going through a lot of things uh, emotionally as well. And when I finally did get pregnant, I was just so sick all the time. And holy cow, you know, just what you're doing could save so many people the hassle of having to have a hysterectomy or being able to save their their feminine health to the point where they can just kind of pick it up and move on forward with it. So that's really cool that you've got that, that knowledge to help people with that. Exactly. And all the things that we talked about earlier, the liver health and detoxification, that is so tied into your hormonal health as well. And uh, when the toxins build up in your body, especially the fat soluble ones, it uh, prevents your body from being able to, detox its own estrogen, causing a buildup of estrogen, causing that estrogen dominance as well. And that caused so many problems with um, basically excess inflammation in your female areas, in your uterus, Uh your breasts, cysts in the breasts, and all kinds of things that are caused by toxicity buildup in the body. And of course, we are exposed to exogenous uh, estrogens, xenoestrogens in the form of birth control a lot of times too. And these can have not great effects on the body. And also not great effects on the liver. It goes back and forth. Wow. And that could have been part of my problem, too, because I was on Depo-Provera for a lot of years, actually. Oh, good grief. Me, too. I think that's what caused me to have uh, develop gallstones. Oh, man. And if we would have known, but hey, you know what? Now we do, right? <laughs> that's what's important is, is able to being able to move forward. What a blessing that, that uh, you can be able to bring this knowledge to people to be able to help them regulate their body so the body will heal itself. That's beautiful. Yeah. And who needs to hear this now is, is parents, is moms, because kids yes. need this. my problem started as a teenager getting those shots mm-hmm. of depo provera. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy what it does to the body and even the mind, just how you get your body so screwed up and everything. It just, it affects your mental health when you're, physically not balanced yes yes exactly so as far as mental health i know there are a lot of people that suffer with depression what approach do you usually do when you're assessing like like somebody's issues in addressing that depression or anxiety well there's there's basically two basic areas where it can be coming from and one is situational there could be something really horrible going on in your life that you have every reason to be depressed it will be abnormal to not be depressed right and and then digging deeper into that to separate out what you can control from what you can't control and is there something you could be doing to fix it and is there something you need to let go let go and let god and then the other type is is caused by usually inflammation in the body or, or gut health or, or uh, overload of toxicity or, in rare cases, possibly parasites. But I don't get into the parasite thing very much. Um, it sometimes may, may come up. But uh, helping the body to restore, detoxify, and uh, bring wellness back will just resolve a lot of those issues. Awesome. I'm sure that's a similar approach to pretty much everything and maybe even including, um, what about autoimmune disease? Because I know there's people that like would have lupus. I've had, I've been in and out of Addison's disease for years. Um, people with fibromyalgia, RA, what kind of detoxes do you usually do to help people so that they can stay more balanced and have less of those flare ups where they're just aching everywhere and just exhausted? The good news is that most autoimmune diseases are absolutely reversible. Put that into remission and it's controllable. There's something that you can do about it. So we're going to do an audit of the environment and figure out is there something specific that that you've been exposed to and then can we uh, avoid that. And 
uh, whether or not we can find that as well, we will restore the function of the immune system with supplements and foods that will decrease inflammation and, and support the body's ability to resolve its own inflammation and, um, and just uh, keep your body running, running cooler and cleaner so it's not hyper-reactive to the, the, the things that other people may not react to. Like if everyone's exposed to the same thing, some will develop autoimmune disease and some will not. So there's some things we can avoid and some that we, we can't. So as well as helping the body um, detox it and avoiding it, we just give the body the, the tools that it needs to not freak out about it. Right. Well, especially the the reaction that a lot of people have to the big V word, I'm not going to say it out loud, but the VAX, you know, getting shots that a lot of us have been over stimulated with our immune systems, causing that autoimmune reaction. How would you help somebody that's maybe had big Harma damage in one way or another? Yeah, well, I'm one of those people and found out the hard way of the, all of the different things that were making me ill. Um, and, the same way that we would address what we just discussed, the, the autoimmune issues, which is to, to try to limit exposure to future toxins. In some cases, you might, you might have to be exposed to something because the, the risk versus benefit just plays out that it's better for you to take that hit and then mm -hmm. detoxify later and to help the body restore so it's not going to overreact to that toxin. Um, it would be a calculated risk. Um, a situation may be coming up soon for a lot of people when the coronavirus vaccine is going to become available. And this is a decision that everyone will, will have to make because some may find that it, it may be better for them to take the vaccine to protect themselves from the daily virus. And some will figure that there are risks to this, that maybe it's best that I don't. And hopefully we will still have that, that choice that each one of us can make. But yeah. What we're going to do is the same thing is uh, support the body's ability to detoxify what it's been exposed to, as well as to provide all of the ingredients to build healthy cells that don't respond to inflammation in a negative way. So they're able to turn off the inflammatory response after it gets turned on. And that's, that makes a difference between someone who reacts to a toxin and someone who doesn't in a lot of cases. Right. Because a lot of us have severe reactions and... Holy cow, detoxing from that is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Really cool, really interesting um, approach and practice that you've got. Now, you said that you're going to be doing it primarily from home. And so are you going to be open as far as like United States, Canada for receiving people? Or are you pretty much open to anybody globally? I should be able to practice globally in the health coaching capacity. Of course, I cannot prescribe uh, anything for individuals who are not in, in areas that I can serve with my licensure for being a medical doctor. But if you happen to be in the state of California, Georgia, or Utah, then I can be your doctor. Um, oh, that's cool. Be a, a specialist, not your primary care physician, but uh, your functional medicine con consulting doctor. But uh, that's really cool. Health coaching should be able to practice that worldwide. Awesome. Awesome. And do you have a website that you're going to be creating or do you do more of like a video chat thing? You can email me at curemylifenow at gmail.com to get on my waiting list. Oh, wow. Okay. So you do have a, a waiting list and everything. That's really awesome. That is Cure, C-U-R-E, my life now. And I'm just writing it down really quick. So I'll make sure that that link is in the bottom uh, so that people can get a hold of you. Um, now, are you going to be making any kind of courses that people could purchase or uh, anything like that? Say somebody wants to be able to function like maybe meditations or Anything like that that you offer that they'll be able to plug into? Hopefully coming soon. Really great ideas. There's so much that, that can be shared and um, through lectures, courses, videos that I'm, I'm working on that to be able to get this knowledge out there so that we can each take responsibility for our health 
heal our own right. body. Right. Perfect. And then um, any other way besides curemylifenow.com, do you have any other way that people can get a hold of you if they're wanting to explore um, coaching and mentoring with you? Well, that to email me at curemylifenow at gmail.com. I'm also available on Rave VIP, R A V E V I P, and on Instagram and Facebook as well. Awesome. Perfect. And then that way everyone can be able to to get a hold of you and then schedule. Because I'm sure that there's going to be people listening that decide, oh, you know what? This sounds like something that resonates with me. I've been looking for a functional medicine person that can also, you know, help me in this area and coaching and just kind of the whole package, which is really awesome that you're able to provide that for people. Really cool. So as far as maybe giving um, a little advice to people what are the top three things that somebody could do to help kind of start getting their life in order, their health, their nutrition, and start moving forward that, um, that you could just offer as a benefit to the, the community? Eat five servings of vegetables per day. Make sure they are brightly colored. Make sure at least one of them is a leafy green. At least one of them is a cruciferous or the um, broccoli kale type of vegetable. Uh, really eat those five servings a day, at least. If you are eating those, you're going to have tremendous benefits to your health. The other thing is 15 minutes of sunshine per day before you put your sunscreen on. We need it. Our body can't do can't make vitamin D without it. We need sunshine. It's so important for more than just vitamin D but for our mental health. And then the other thing is to write down three things that you're grateful for per day because what you focus on grows. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, this has been a very interesting and fascinating conversation. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your gifts and your talents with people. I know that being able to have connections like this definitely helps to make the world a better place. And I look forward to watching your practice grow. Those that are with C4OC Radio as well as Revelation Radio Networks, any of you guys that have any questions for Maggie, I'll have the links below in the comment or just above the comments so that you can reach out to her. Thank you so much, Maggie, for being with us today. It's been a pleasure and I have just really enjoyed discussing this with you. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for having me on today. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And everybody with C4OC Radio Network as well as Revelation Radio Network too. Thank you so much for watching. This is Amaria Sweet, and we'll see you next time.